to leave You still make me want to stay You ask me to believe In the words that you say But I can't be strong If you can't move on Don't you think we've had enough Of the trauma you Thinking we can get through anything Cause I can't move on If you can't be strong But every time I hear you say my name It always feels the same Cause I loved you for a change but lately things have been the same and it's my heart you're holding back again and i can't be strong if you
All right, that should be good. Yeah, I can hear myself. There, muted. Everybody, welcome back. Happy Sunday, the 4th of February. 4th of February. That's Can't cool. believe it. Yeah. I can believe it. It's been a long winter already. Last three or four days, though, I, you don't know if we're going to have our spring break or what. I mean, the water's opening, the poor ice fishing I people. I mean... You know, he's got all these augers and everything here, and they're just going up and down. But it was beautiful to see the lakes open up. Dude, you know, you I, can you can go out of Manistee right I, now. You can go there, into Crystal Lake. Is there a dock in Manistee? No. Okay. okay. And yeah. I know some places have docks yeah. in all loading. Because they got their docks in, or a dock in, I believe. Everybody, welcome back. Happy Sunday to you. So tonight, we got a pretty good show for you. Tonight is big fish tactics, not only for tournaments, but just in general. And uh, these are things that... I don't know, I, I find myself also wondering about, so I brought in people that know a lot more than me about this. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that know a lot more than me about these kind of things. So Captain Mark Chamura is here. Good to see you. Gabe Allison is here. If you guys don't know Gabe, uh, think back to that video we did a couple weeks back, the Ultimate Salmon Derby. Gabe and his, uh, his wife Courtney are operating that, and we're going to talk about that some tonight. And if you don't know who Captain Mark Chamura is, where the heck have you been for the last hundred years no <laughs> anyways courtney's back over there she's gonna slap him around if he says anything wrong so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool yeah so we're going to talk tonight about big fish tactics actually it's something that uh i'm really looking forward to bouncing some ideas off these guys and get some feedback back from them we're also going to be looking for everybody on here to give us feedback if you got questions if you got your own tactics you want to throw out there please do so don't forget to take the poll the poll question tonight is Biggest salmon of all time that you caught, spoon, flasher fly, meat rig, or a plug? You let us know in the uh, poll, please. Right now, spoon, 62%, way out in the lead. Next closest at 16% is flasher fly. And meat rig at 12 and 9% of plug. You kind of surprised me. You should have a yes mm -hmm. category there. Yeah. Yeah. I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, please take the poll if you haven't done that already. We'll circle back to that here at the end of the discussion. We got a couple things to uh, go over as far as the drawing goes. Um, I saw Patrick Johan on here, on here a little while ago. He asked if uh, somebody got their package. I'm, I know they did because they posted it on our uh, on our Discord page. So thanks, Patrick, for that. Also, everybody has contacted me about those giveaways, and everybody's been taken care of except for two, and that is the river trip. Nobody got a hold of me on that, so I got an extra winner pulled on that. We already actually had some extra people pulled. And then on the Nova Tackle Rod. And uh, Steve Marines, we pulled that name for the Nova Tackle Rod. So Steve Marines, if you're out there, you got a week to get a hold of me. If you won the rod. It's all yours. Get a hold of me, and I'll get you in contact with Nova Tackle. And then Nick Romanick. Nick, I probably just butchered that. I butcher that name every time. But Nick Romanick, you know you're out there. You were pulled uh, as the third stringer on that uh, river charter trip. So get a hold of me, and I'll take you out for a day of fun fishing and uh, everything on me. It'll be a good time. So get a hold of me, guys, and we'll go from there. How you guys doing? Doing great. Good. Good. Glad to see you, Mark. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. No, I know you. You're always happy. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah, glad to be by Gabe. You know, I, I, I go way, way back with Gabe. I remember fishing in Toronto with him, and he's the skyline of Toronto, and we're catching fish, and and uh, yeah, it, so we've been around for a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Definitely so, learned a thing or two from, from this guy right here. Yeah. You said you took your first river trip with Mark, didn't you? I took oh, my first river oh, yeah. trip with Mark. Yeah. 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 Uh, was that uh, was that back in eighty four? No, no, no. <laughs> it was uh, it was probably in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. somewhere in there. But definitely, it all merges, you know. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. these days, uh, and no. my days of youth and old and everything. But no, so. you're not kidding. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Purchase is on here. He got his shirts from you guys. Yep, it's great. People are on here saying that they hear us loud and clear. That's great. The cat is lurking around by our feet. 
if all of a sudden everything goes flying, you know that the cat has found us and has taken care of everything because <laughs> the cat is. Cat un- loves me. I mean, I have a cat at home and she loves my wife, and I kind of pet her every once in a while. But this, she's, cat, this one's all over. This me. one's unpredictable. Yeah, like right here. You don't <laughs> never. Yeah, she's on my foot right now. You you never know what mood she's gonna be in. And then all of a sudden, he says the cat just goes nuts. She, goes so psycho. I, she was on my back, on my head, and I don't need her to go nuts. So, you know, that would, that would work out really good for right now. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, Let's remind everybody, hey, Hi, these you. Sunday night live streams are probably brought to you by Dreamweaver Lures. Check them out at dreamweaverlures.com. Dreamweaver also a sponsor of the Ultimate Salmon Derby. Yep, yep. They are uh, first place on the trout side of things. Yeah, they're good people. Yep. I really enjoy working with them. We're uh, actually to catch everybody up on that. We're building that uh, live stream studio in Dreamweaver, not this coming week, but the week after. It's going to be probably two or three weeks out till we get that thing up and running. But uh, I'm excited to get in there. It's better than this little corner we wedge ourselves into. Although this corner has served us pretty well over the years. There's a lot to look at looking this way, folks. I mean, yeah. whatever you need, it's all over here. Yeah, so. No doubt about it. All right, let's let's uh, let's just jump right into the topic of the week here if you guys are ready. Sure. All right, topic of the week this week, and it's a good one. Big fish tactics. So if you're out there running a tournament, you're in the derby, you want to know how to catch bigger fish, uh, or you just want to go out there on the weekend, you get two or three days a year, and a lot of people are out there you know, just like that. They get from one trip to the big lake a year, and they want to maximize it as, uh, as best they can, maybe catch the biggest fish that they can, and, uh, and take that thing home, maybe put it on a wall. Yeah, so we're going to talk about big fish tactics. So tonight, like I said, um, when I go after when I when I'm out there fishing, I pretty much let the lake I let the lake give me what it wants to give me. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, I mean, if we get a few big fish, that's great. So that I'm going to go into more details on that on the way I think about things. But when I think about tournament winning tactics, there's only a couple people that come into my mind. Mark Chimer is one of them, without a doubt. Paul Schlafly is another one. Uh, a few guys out of Ludington as well. But Mark, you're you're normally right there at that top. One or two percent for me when I'm thinking about tournament winning tactics, how you get the big fish in the boat. And you have some of the best stories about how you pull those last 20 minute miracles off and over at certain times. So, we're gonna, I definitely want to lean on you, Gabe. I know you're an avid fisherman out there on Lake Michigan. Um, you put a lot of time on the water, also, you've had a lot of success over the years as well. So, yeah, let's let's start here. Let's differentiate. You know, what's a big fish to everybody? I mean, what, what's your cutoff? What's a big fish? I think. Well, first of all, I just want to say, this is all Gabe's favorite right here. He's giving it all away right now. You know, his secrets, they're they right here. They can't, my, see, they can't see I didn't bring any of you mine. I but, didn't either. Yeah. They can't see, but they will. Yeah, yeah. So Gabe's got a bunch of stuff laying here on the table. But So, Mark, I mean, in your opinion, what's a big fish? What's a big king? Well, you have to go with what's going on for that time of the year. You know, there's a lot of times that uh, that the kings are way, way out deep and offshore and, and – You'll be in tight fishing for them, and you're in a tournament or whatever. You kind of fish all week, and you or you fish prior to it, and, and you can tell what a good king is and, yeah. and one you know that isn't. Some years a uh, a 22 pounder is a big fish. Yeah. Other years a 22 pounder you don't even weigh them. You know, yeah. in, in the three three three. So, yep. But uh, there's our kitty. <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, and. Now that he has this program that he's doing, and he's going out there, and people are going to be fishing, trying to get big fish. Mm-hmm. They're they're not. I don't think I don't know if they're going to do it just for. They're going to get out there and they're going to. But if you look at all the stats from the past, it's usually just a avid Sunday fisherman, Saturday fisherman. You know, catches one big fish. I can't tell you how many tournaments I've been in, and you go and the guy that got the big fish of the whole tournament they might only caught two of them for that week so uh, big fish sometimes they're in shallower water when everybody else is out fishing deep and and the majority of them isn't there but it's the big fish seem to come in first and mm-hmm. then the smaller ones follow same up the yeah, river I agree so i i always get big fish first that come in and then the smaller ones uh, come after that 
Yep. So, so if you could put a number on a big fish, would you say over 25, over 30? It all depends what era. Okay. I mean, Gabe, what do you think? Boy, I'd say kind of where things stand right now, I'd say over 28, I think. Yeah. Like, like, let's say this, this last year, that would have been a big fish, right? Yeah. 28 to 30, yep. 31. Yep, I completely agree. But I, I think, far and few bet between last year, right? I, I don't recall think. when Sturgeon Bay had tournaments. We used to go there all the time. And if you were, they had nothing to do with the tournament. If you caught a king that was 30 pounds and up, you got 10 grand. Mm. And for so many years, they never, nobody ever, nobody ever caught one that big there. Yeah. So you have seasons, you know, and a lot of people that are fishing right now didn't fish way back then. And they, they're not aware of the up and down of the sizes, depending on what the forage is in the lake, depending on, you know, there's a lot that yeah. goes into this. Absolutely. So what's the biggest uh, king you've caught, Mark? What's your personal best? 35, 14. Okay. Is it, is it something your boat caught or something, something you caught? Something my boat caught. Yeah, when I think of that, the okay. same way. All right. This, this little kid gets on my boat, him and his father, and he's 10 years old. And his dad brought him because his report card is really good. So he gets on the boat and he says, Cat Mark, I'm going to get a 30 pounder today. I said, Yeah, it's good. You know, and that was like, if you get a 30 pounder in that time, it was, you know, pretty good. So he gets it. He's fighting this fish, right? He's bringing in a little kid sweating and everything. His dad and I are talking. This, we're taking it. He's a beautiful day, you know, beautiful evening. When I seen that fish and I netted it, I couldn't believe it, you know, <laughs> laying across the floor. And I get on the radio. I said, You guys, boy, we got a good one. How big is it? I don't know, but I know it looks like it don't belong around here. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so what'd you, you catch know? it on? Spoon? That, would, fly, that fly? came off of a, a, a spoon. Okay. How about you, Gabe? What was the biggest fish uh, either you or your boat ever caught? It was 34 and change on my boat. Yeah. Fish. Yeah. Yep. For me, it was 32 and change on my boat. Not not that I caught. My personal best is 29 and change. Wait a minute. Wait. But wait, for wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Go ahead. I won. <laughs> yeah, okay. you did. For yeah. me, it was Lake Ontario, though. So yeah. I that's I derby fished there for over ten years. So yeah. that was uh, and there was a quite a quite a long period of time where we couldn't touch those fish over there. Yeah, the fish in Lake Michigan w w weren't near yeah. that size. You know. Yeah. What did uh, your fish come on? Uh that was this. That was a spoon. Okay. Yeah. And mine, mine came on a plug. In uh, early September one year, up on the pier heads, a big old, it's one of, I think, five fish we caught that day. And we'll, like you said, when we got to the back of the boat, we knew that it was just a big fish. Yeah. Yep. So, so spoon, spoon, and plug for me. So a lot of things, a lot of things to think about there. This is what I always, springtime, mostly, majority, like when you get out right now, then you start getting into the flasher flies. And then the latter part of the season. All right, well, well, I got, plug, got, but okay, I got a real mark back in here. Okay. He likes jumping away at well, everything. So. We so, can fill it all in, but go ahead. Oh, absolutely. So say it is June, and uh, there's some nice kings around. Say we had a good May, you know, some nice spring kings. We're leaking into June now, and we know there's some nice kings still out there. What are you guys going to do? If you want to go target a nice, that's called June and July. If you want to go target a real nice king in June and July, is there anything special you're going to be doing? First of all, I'm going to look at the graph. I'm going to just, and I'm going to kind of vision where I need to be. Second of all, is I'm going to set up a program with however many rods, whatever we put out there, I'm going to isolate each one of them and have a separate, I don't want rod number one and rod number two to see each other so the fish see both of them. So I'm going to separate everything. These holders I make have these detents inside. So when you put the rod in there, you can see all the reels right in front. I can stand in the middle of my boat and go like this mm -hmm. and know where everything's at. All of a sudden, that rod goes. I know what that one is, and then I feed upon that. Mm -hmm. So you have you have to, if you just put stuff out there, rhyme or no reason. But if you put that out there and say it's a spoon, then all of a sudden you go on this side, and I'm going to match that up, and I'm going to get a little more creative here. And then you can feed back, and by the end of the day, you got them going on. So there might be a diver with this on it. All of a sudden it takes a big fish. Right. And then you got this up high, and all you're doing is catching these little fish. Yep. So... You pay attention to this, and then you you feed it a little bit more to each side, and I mean that's all you can do. And you, you might go deeper, you might come up higher, but you keep everything separate yep. and feed off the information that they're giving you. Have you found that certain times of the day produce bigger fish than others? Early mor morning versus mid morning versus late late morning. Yeah, that 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 always happens per se. Like uh, we'll be fishing and and. Uh, 
the days before we got big fish at 10 30 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and, and then i actually did this and this was i and yes fred mcdonald this was kind of crazy but uh i went out one time and i i was i was gone i came back and i, I had all the rods out and you had to keep what you caught so i caught nine fish in about 10 minutes and they were all this big and i was done so i found these fish and they were hitting at like 10 10 30. Mm -hmm. but if you had to get away from the little ones so i went out there and i drove around and i found the fish and i, I didn't start fishing until 10 o'clock and i almost won it I, I i needed two more fish i got eight fish and i didn't get enough okay but they were so, all good ones so obviously the time of the day is going to be dependent also on whatever that season's giving you right so right. we've we've always for at least for us our biggest fish have always come midday yeah. like the fish that we've won derbies with have yeah. always been like that when everyone goes in i mean you sit out there and you grind it out there's always another bite right the guys that leave right after that morning bite i think they're missing out you yeah, know it's a big word to grind it out i mean a lot you yeah. if your program goes dead keep if you got fish on the graph and you got if it goes dead you got to keep working it and you know no matter what, and you, you feel like you start shrinking down because you're <laughs> doing good. Keep going and, and yeah. do do different things, but yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I, I think back in the last five years, we put, I think, eight kings in the boat over 30 pounds. I can remember a couple came early morning. The majority came, though, late later in the morning, you know, 11, 10, 11 o'clock, maybe even noon. And then maybe a couple came in the late evening just before dark. So I absolutely agree with you guys. I think... A lot of the bigger fish are going to be coming after that big morning flurry, maybe just before that uh, that early afternoon flurry when they're going to maybe turn back on for you. Hopefully they turn back on. I'm, I'm a big clean water guy. If I see a pile of boats, I that's for me, that's not big fish water. Yeah. Like I'll slide in, I'll slide out, I'll wait for the boats to leave, and then usually you get that time to settle down, and then we'll pluck we'll pluck some big fish out of there. When, yeah. we, when we go out fishing even, out here for fun, we still fish big fi fish tactics. I mean, for us, I love catching big kings. Mm -hmm. So it's for I, I feel I fish differently. I'm I'm not all about being the first one at the point. I'm not right for me. I'd rather find my own pocket of fish and and work that pocket and maybe go check out the point midday, right? Or you know, because a lot of times boat pressure and so on pushes fish immediately yeah. right and you know you, they may slide right up into the shallows or they you know they slide out of, that's one thing i've talked about this channel before is when i see a big line of boats all working the shelf i like working on the outside of them because what are they doing it's just like a deer drive they're pushing those fish out you know they, they're going to get spooked just like any other animal will with all that traffic all that noise all that clutter in the water they're not going to want to stick around there i think a lot of those fish will start getting pushed off by those boats what do you think mark well, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so you get fish in the bank. You're with 100 boats first thing in the morning. Hour goes by. You look at everybody. Nobody's doing anything. I would always head west. And here is heading towards the middle of the lake. Right. You know, if you're on Wisconsin side, you know, you'd head east. But uh, I, I would just go out west, and I would drop my center down right here. Uh -huh. And I would keep on dropping it as I got deeper and deeper. It's hard. It's hard to do it the other way, bringing it up as you're coming up, but going down is pretty, it's, it's easier. And I kind of stay away from everybody. Yeah. So these last five years, I don't even fish the bank. I'm, you do your own thing. See you later. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can, I can go like this. I don't have to worry about hitting anybody, yeah. running them, you know, yep, absolutely. and I catch fish out there. So, I mean, yep. you know, it's uh so that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. I, I completely understand. And I agree with you. There's a lot of times I, same way, I see a pack of boats in one place, and I'm going the absolute opposite direction as fast as I can. So one thing, when you do catch a decent fish or whatever, they go on, they, they're in schools, herds, or mm -hmm. whatever. So, like, any of this stuff, one gets going on this one, your longitude, latitude matters, your temperatures matter, mm -hmm. all the factors that you put together matter, and then you feed off of that. Mm -hmm. And then you can do figure eights around there or find another one, another, uh, a uh, spot that you're getting fish or seeing fish in, and then you just work back and work forth. Work back and forth yeah. on it, yeah. Because yeah. I know in the past you told me that you don't run long lines. You, you'll run downriggers primarily and divers. I'll run long lines. Lenny, when we were fishing this last year, we were only running six rats because it was re we really had them dialed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you got them, when you got them working, it, it, uh, 
sometimes the long lines, your your kings will run into a lot, and it, you can't turn quick to get back to where you needed to be. Yeah. And so, uh, so is that so is that something you'd recommend? Say, uh, say you hit a big fish, and you know exactly. Uh, well, generally that cord that's where thing that thing came. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, something you're going to turn back oh, on? Yeah. Do a figure, you're yeah. going to turn right back on? Yeah. Well, I, I always in the past, if it's just an average fish, and it's just you know. I believe that once you're trolling one direction, they start following you and they come together and there's a bunch of them following you. And it's just these sudden moves that you make, they get them to react. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if, if for some odd reason you stop seeing anything, stop getting any activity, then you go back to where you were at, you know, where you were getting them at. Gotcha. So, okay. For what me, about, yeah, go ahead. For me, it was always, uh, I always looked at the class of fish that I was catching. I, I really didn't turn unless it was, if I caught two fish that were in the class that I was looking for, a big pocket of fish, then I'd, I'd quit looking, yeah. right? Because we, for me, I wasn't, like Mark fished a lot of tournaments and so on. I agree, you know, or you got clients on the boat or whatever it is. But for me, just fishing derbies like I used to in Ontario, I'd keep going until I found that class of fish that I wanted. Sometimes I'd pick up and go, right? If, if it was all little six or eight pound fish and i that's all i was plucking out of that area i'd go find some other water right. and it there was a, a lot of driving around right and uh and the pre-fishing plays a big part of that as well you know if you're if you can get a, two or three days before that tournament to get out and do some pre-fishing i think that helps at least also. a day you at know? least a day yeah. yeah yeah many tournaments we ran completely blind uh because we were working me and my guys were working full time and you know we get there Oh, four in the morning, the day of the tournament. Where do you want to go? Like, I don't have an idea. <laughs> I don't have any clue. That makes it really hard. It makes because it the confidence hard. level drops. It I does. Mean, you're getting into something. Yeah. But, it, uh, it does. If you surround yourself with good people, you can normally overcome things like that. You know, there's enough good fishermen on a boat. You can put some ideas together normally. But, uh, yeah, you definitely want to get some pre-fishing in if you're going to be running some tournaments. But with your salmon derby, you know, there are going to be people that are coming up, you know, for that one or two days. So three day weekend. I was a weekend guy, right? Mm -hmm. I I I have my nine to five job. Unfortunately, it wasn't fishing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd come up on the weekends and I'd always I'd be posed with that quest of finding out where fish were, right? And you're so when you th when you show up on the water, the first thing you want to do is I want to get my rods down. I want to fish, and for me, that was always a mistake. I had to find what I was looking for, whether it was watercolor, bait. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some areas where the currents weren't, you know, swirling, turning, right? That stable water. Stable water. That, and that was the first thing I'd go look around and try and find, right? And you burn gas, but, and you're not fishing during that time, but you're looking, right? Like I'm watching my graph. I'm watching, I'll, I'd always start up skinny, you know, at a river mouth or whatever it was and work my way out, see what's happening and see how the picture develops. Keep put. Yeah putting the probe down, run a little bit more, put the probe down. Yeah. I did a lot of run and gun just to figure out where, where the fish were. And that, it, I guess my advice for the weekend guys is, you know, because you're not there all week long, keeping on fish and, and keeping track of where the pockets of fish are, you know, use your skills that you've learned, you know, look for watercolor, look for, look for temperature, look for, um, you know, bait fish was another big thing, right? So a lot of telltale signs out there. Well, you know, I I can just kind of fill all this in. The the charter guys in Ludington always wanted fifteen fish for a tournament. Uh -huh. Then Fred came in for the three fish for uh -huh. the okay, and then three fish. And the reason we did that is because so the the pro and the 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 guy that don't want to go up against a pro. In two days, can catch three fish. Equals the field. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to find out this first year, we, we need one big fish. We don't need three. We don't need 15. We need one. You can be in a 14-foot rowboat with one rod, a five-color. <laughs> I'm telling you, right. I'm dead serious, you know. And, right. and that's the guy more than likely that's going to win. And, yeah. I, you know, you can – he plays just as good a chance as a charter guy. I was just thinking the same thing before you yeah. said that. I was going to ask you guys. So if you were that guy that only has three days to fish, say Holland, Muskegon, Manistee, wherever it might be, I got those three days to fish, and I'm on the fence about buying this uh, this derby ticket, would you still do it? Would you recommend that these people still get into the derby? Well, 
for what they have to pay, yes. Oh, that, that's exactly yeah. my point. I mean, yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, charter guys, it's more expensive. But if you broke it down and divided it by how many days some charter guys are going to be out there, yep. it's not expensive. Yep. But if you if you're if you're just going there for the weekend, yeah, heck yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I mean, that, I, you know what? Anybody that's anybody in the tackle business around here that's making tackle and are, are on board with him. They're all, I mean, they're all clinging to him, and they're giving stuff to get you guys going. And uh, how much more fun would that be, you know? Well, I, and I, then you could have your name in the marquee lights. <laughs> right. Yeah, big, I mean that's what's going to happen. Big deal for six days at least. Yeah. Until the next, uh, the next winter's and How many I, boats are you giving away? We're on the salmon side. It's eight boats. Eight boats. Yeah. Eight so boats. come on. I think you got to get out of that mindset of I want to fill my cooler and my freezer and right. I I'm here to harvest fish. Mm -hmm. If you get out of that mindset and think that I'm looking to catch a big fish or five big fish or whatever it is and you work at it right you treat it like like you're competing and you work and you 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 fish hard you you don't go in because you're hungry at 8 30 in the morning i, I want and, to tell you something right anybody watching this is our fishermen yeah they got it they understand and you know it's it's uh they're they're probably wondering how this thing's going to take off if they're sitting back or if they're if they dove in yet but uh Spring's coming and, and you'll be in it. Yeah, yeah. That's the time yeah. without a doubt. Well, I think exactly about what you're saying there, Gabe. When I think about back on the big fish that we've caught over, say, the last five, six years, every one of those, I was not specifically targeting a big fish in any way. I was just out trolling. I was just out running my normal gear, my normal spread, and I happened to stumble onto this 31, 30 pounder, 31 pounder, 32 pounder, whatever it was. 28 pounder, 29 pounder, 28 or 29 pounder is going to be a good fish that's coming here. Mm -hmm. I think, I think without a doubt. So I'm not, I wasn't out there in any way thinking, okay, I'm going to throw this, this big white paddle down on the center down rear, and that's going to get my biggest fish. You know, my biggest fish all of a sudden smacked a 225 copper with a mag spoon on it. Yeah. And I never thought, you know, well, that's out there for that big fish. It's out there because I know it's going to catch fish. And if you put enough lines and enough lures and enough fish faces, eventually, you're going to stumble into a big one. I, I don't think it's the bait. I don't think, I no. think it's, that's the last thing, the color of the bait and what you're using. I think if it's the biggest part is finding them, Put them right? In the zone. Yeah. Yep. And, and getting your rods where they need to go. And right. I mean, it, it, it's the, the bait, if they're there and, and you get it in front of them and you can make them feed on a few different things. Mm -hmm. What it's, you're saying, you don't need any of this. Then. I'm saying, I mean. <laughs> we'll split it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I mean, we'll show everyone what I have here on the table. But yeah. I, for me, it's, and once I got past, past that mentality of chasing the right spoon or chasing the right flasher or chasing and looking for fish that's when i when we started yeah. being successful yeah. derby fishing you know and, and i think for me that was that was my turning point on on my my fishing success I, right i completely agree with that and that, that was my point as well i'm not i'm no way qualified to say i'm a big fish fisherman that's not me i'm just i'm out there doing my normal thing stumbling into these big fish from time to time there's people out there much more qualified than i am to know Maybe some really good fit, big fish tactics, certain times of the day, what lures to run. That's not me. I'm out there running my, my certain spread, certain time of the day on areas that I know are productive. Now, like you said, Cap, um, if I get a couple big fish and I know the area that they're in, area that they're in or maybe a large area that they're in, I'm going to work that area. Of course, who wouldn't? Right. But uh, I'm not thinking, okay, that spoon right there, like I said, is going to take that 31-pounder for me today because it's on this certain rod and the sun is at that angle. And it's 48 degree water. You know what I mean? There's it's a lot of things that go into that. So I think your average guy or gal that's going to get these derby entry tickets and go out there, they have just as much chance as anyone else out there fishing. That's the point I'm trying to make in a, in a long-winded way. If yeah. you guys agree with it, that's great. 100%. Don't, that's why I yeah. compared the 15 to 1. Yeah. I mean, okay, so the... And, and and you don't have as much, you don't have the pressure put upon you. Mm -hmm. There's no zero pressure. So you can you can enjoy it and have fun. And and on the other hand, uh, you're learning. And you're learning what to do and what not to do. And the water, I go out there, the water tells me what to do. I mean, I, I just, you've been doing it for so long. You see different color change in water. You see uh, uh, 
the, the different temperatures that are going on, the way the, the high skies are or low skies. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's, yep. there's a lot of things that you can look at and where birds are feeding, birds are better birds fishermen are than we are. Birds are great, you know? yeah, especially yeah. around the pierheads, they can tell yeah. you a lot of things. And so don't feed them at McDonald's where they're <laughs> doing their job. And <laughs> yeah, let them get out to the lake, yeah. please. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. Um, so let's talk about, again, you got a whole pile of lures sitting there. Let's talk about some of the things that you brought and what you want to talk about. I guess for me, um, one thing I wanted to point out as far as tactics, I always have at least one flash. Mm -hmm. I, for me, I don't know. Uh, it, it got ingrained in my head. I always have at least a flasher down and that might be on a low diver. Or it might be on a rigger. Um, but I feel like, there's something about that flasher. It brings that fish drinks. in. I agree with that 100%. And if I get a spoon bite, right, a lot of times I'll stretch that flasher way back, right? And and you'll notice that it may bring the fish into the spread, and then they'll commit to the spoons that are next to the boat, right? Absolutely. But that, you know, if it, if it's if I'm fishing spoons, that's I'll have the flasher stretched way back. But, uh, I mean... It's a lot to do with uh, watercolor for me, uh, sunlight, overcast, not overcast, right? Obviously, the same same idea, right? This, uh, I mean, everyone knows this uh, Dream white Weaver, paddle, Dreamweaver right? eleven inch pearl fish scale. Yeah, and I this is uh, this is a hypnotist on here, but pickled sunshine, yep. all the all the close to the same. Um, but you know, this this lives a lot on my on my rigger. You know, and then I'm a big meat guy, right? I, I love meat and cut bait and, you know, so this, this is a, I'll, I still run a lot of these big Okies. I know guys have gone away from these, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll run these, uh, with meat rigs, yeah. um, especially. Yep. So I'll run the meat rigs on those big patents too from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's just, that's just one little part of it. Like I said, what the are you grinning about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of chromes right like I, I i run a lot of chromes when the water's when the sun's up high and the water's clear right like you know you're not fishing green water mm -hmm. um which happens a lot here in lake michigan right. anymore mm -hmm. right 90 percent right. of the time um run uh this is something my canadian friends is a shout out to my canadian buddies they showed me this this is a uh, a gold meat rig, actually, with a, a gold golden chrome flasher. That's all so, I wanted for Christmas. He yeah, send me here you go, right. Mark. Oh, look at that. Ready? <laughs> That's on the low diver. That's where I'd be around with it. But it's, it's all about confidence, right? And this is this is kind of a confidence And how do you get confidence? You, get you just down. fish. You spend, you spend time. by learning these things, the water clarity, the temperatures. The, and you know when to get it right because and, all of a sudden they yeah. start catching fish. Yeah, and then it, you'll, it'll, you'll revert and you'll come back and you'll go, you'll remember certain things that put you in that position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, things just, you, you you run baits. Like for me, this big beckled with, uh, you know, it's a hypno green hypnotist meat rig, right? Mm -hmm. This This right here pulls big fish for me for some reason on my boat and not for everyone, right? My boat's not the same as his boat as your boat. Right. But for me, this, this does it right. And sure. over and over again, have I ever caught a 30 pounder on this? No, but this is confidence. You know, if I'm looking for big fish, I, I like meat. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really a confidence thing for me. So I, Paul Slaffy told me something a long time that all stuck with me. Y'all said, if you want big fish, there's two ways that he always saw plugs and meat. Plugs, he always said catch big fish. And that's something that stuck with me anytime I'm out, you know, late in the fall or late in the summer getting into fall, I got a lot of plugs out. Um, and I've taken big fish off plugs. Uh, just those little things that stick in your brain that people people have been doing this thing a long time. You know why? You know why you're getting them off of plugs when you're what you're, what you're talking about? The reason that you're getting them off of plugs and what you're talking is when the kings are starting to stage up. Mm -hmm. The big ones come in first, mm -hmm. and the plugs get down. You put them in front of their face when they're loaded at the bottom, in 50, 60, 80 foot, wherever they're at, and that's why you're getting the big ones. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So. That's actually something I do quite often. All right, often. that's it. No more of that. <laughs> <laughs> no more secrets. Huh? No, no, but that that's why, you know, and uh, that that's just that part of the year, and that's what happens. Yep, absolutely. I agree. And you're also talking about then, you know, the, those big fish are starting 
not to want to feed anymore, too. You got to get something in their face that's going to irritate them. And there's not much more things I think it's going to be irritable than a than a rattling plug sitting right in the yeah, right near the strike one. zone. So for me, is that little a, is that atomic? No, this is this is a horde, a oh. silver horde. Um, it's their number four, I think it is. Yep, that's their four size. Yeah, so that big fish like little plugs too, yes, right? They do. So. For me, I, I, I like to run them with just a single hook. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but. Uh, yeah, I, because they get the other one and they're reeling them in sideways like this. Yeah, yeah. So. And that one right there used to be like uh, they, the bigger one. It's Grand Haven's number one. Mm -hmm. Just showing some of the things that to make sure everybody saw what you held up there, Gabe, if you don't mind. That thing right there is such a staple. Now that fly right there, that's that right there is a rapture. Yep. Jeff. Makes the best flies in the world, has been for a long, long time. And Great stuff. He, yeah. He never named one after me, but I'm still plugging for you, Jeff. <laughs> what would you want him to name it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't need no more attaboys, right? <laughs> Just big fish. Yeah. I don't know. For me, I, it, it's, it's a lot about being in the right spot, being there at the right time. Yeah. You know, and realizing that not all the fish bite from, you know, 5 a.m. to to 7.30 in the morning, yeah. right? That you you have to have confidence that they're going to turn back on. Yeah. If, if you caught fish during the morning, they, sh they should turn back on. You, they may have slid out a little bit. They may have slid in a little bit, but you got to read what's happening, right? Right. It's a gamble. Everything mm -hmm. we do is a gamble, but it's a gamble. But if you do a little bit of homework your gamble increase, your odds increase, you know? Oh, sure. And, and anybody, like I said, anybody, if they fish enough and they're involved in this derby, they're, you're going to, if you, if it isn't you, one of your buddies is going to do good or the guy down three boats from you and you're going to, you'll have your shot at it. So I have no doubt though, that luck is going to play a factor. In this. Oh yeah, no, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. How many, how many tournaments have you guys seen where a boat you've never heard of before Guys you've never met, and they show up, and they, they end up in first place after the uh, end of the, when it's all said and done. Then you know them, and then you know them. Right. Yeah. The, the, the guys, you know them. the guys who make it in the top ten, they're very good at what they're doing, right? But the you know to win a to win a tournament, it's usually a kicker fish, mm -hmm. or it's two kicker fish, right? It's usually. There's a few guys that are close with regards to boxes, but one guy gets the couple kickers, gets the right, the dials in their program to the point where they do pluck the bigger fish out of that pot of fish, right? And for me, I've I use the run and gun tactic to because I am a weekend guy and usually I'm running six rods or nine rods or right, and it's easy to pluck all those rods out of the water and run you know, five miles down just to get to some better fish. I can tell you one thing. It's easier to get away from, okay, if you fish in front of a harbor, then you're throwing dice in the corner. Because, you know, you, we fish the tournament. I mean, yeah. you got you to gotta get lucky in that. The farther you get away from that, the better your odds are. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might end up like we had to get five fish each day, and mm -hmm. everybody's getting their five fish, and here's one that's 19.9, .9, and the next one's 20 pounds, and then this guy got a 21 pounder, and it's like he won, you know. Right. And it, it's just, I mean, yeah. so yeah. And there's one thing I, I will, out of everything you guys have said so far, the one thing I will, I just want to circle back and retouch on is get away from the boats. That's right. Get away from the boats. Yeah. Yep. You're gonna find better fish. More, a better quantity of fish and a quality of fish by getting away from those boats. Some of my best days, you couldn't see nobody. Yeah. I mean, binoculars, you can't see nobody. Completely agree. And mm -hmm. you feel like you feel really good. Especially I mean, when, you're, you when like, your rods are going Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're like, you feel really yeah. good. And a big thing, if you find fish offshore, though, it's a lot harder for those fish to move. Yeah. Like we fished, uh, we fished a pocket of fish one year. Uh, Courtney and I went out there for two and a half weeks, three weeks, something like that, to that same there. pocket oh, of yeah. fish. And they didn't move much, maybe a mile or so. But Yeah, if you don't have a big yeah. weather change, you're probably going to stay right there. Even a lot of times you get big blows. And unless that, 
you know, a cold water flip pushes them or something, they'll stay out there, right? They used to steal that fish. You go way offshore, and you'd find these pods of fish, right? Mm -hmm. There'd be everything mixed with it. Trout, mostly trout and steelhead, but mm -hmm. there'd be kings in there, too. And that's where you'd go the following day, and you do good. And you go there, you know, and... And then when that died off, you'd find another spot. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But I still do that in the spring quite often. Yeah, not many yeah. people do that anymore. But you know, you got to have big, deep pockets to pay for all that <laughs> gas to run offshore. That, that's true. And you got to have the right weather also, because oh, yeah. you don't want to get stuck out there, you know, fifteen miles out, and a big storm comes rolling in on you. So, I, I guess if I'm going to take any way, anything away from this whole conversation that we had, like the thing that I just said is, my thing is get away from the boats. Get away from the boats. Run your own program. Don't fish other people's program when it comes to tournaments. That's something that I've stumbled upon and stumbled over a few times. It's it's lost me tournaments in the past, and it's done me okay. But For I, years, I tell my first, put the phone away. We're not talking to nobody. And I, like I told you before, I love people, but when you're in a tournament, you you if you start, if you get on the phone chasing other people's oh, fish, yeah, oh, no, my goodness. We lost, we lost ourselves a tournament one time by doing just yeah. that. We needed two more fish, and somebody said, hey, they're over here. We picked everything up and ran, and we never got them. Yeah. And right where we were, I have no doubt we could have gotten probably two fish. Well, a lot of times when you pick up and run, the clock's just the going clock like this, ticking, man. It's yeah, going fast. All of a sudden, if you leave at 10 o'clock, and then you start when you're fishing again on the new spot, it's uh, 11.35, you know, or, yeah. or whatever. Where did that time go? Yeah, and something you said, Gabe, that I want to retouch on is get back to where you were, where you know the fish are active later in the day. Because that's one thing that we always try to do is if we're getting kings in a certain spot, but we wanted to run off and get our lake trout, we would go and do that. But we also want to make sure we got back there at a certain time of the day when we thought that secondary bite was going to come back on. So, I don't know if that's something you guys yeah. do or not, but it's always worked well. I, I do. So here's a good, here's a story. Um, so I fished Lake Ontario for a solid 10 years at least. I came back during COVID and started fishing Lake Michigan again. So I learned how to fish from Manistee, right? That's where I met Captain Mark and, you know, learned a lot of good things from him. So took a lot of that to Ontario and, tell them about the bad stuff. and, and brought it back Everybody here. Knows, yeah. the, the, the funny thing is when I came back to Ludington, I started listening to everyone. I started, you know, hey, what's been going on? I started talking to all the, the guys that I knew in, in Ludington and Manistee and you know, I, I started fishing someone else's program when I came back and I, you know, I struggled because I wasn't doing what I learned how to do. And that was learn how to find fish and, and look for fish and, and understand where to get them. Right. I was, I was working on reports that were a day late and I was working on you know, baits that someone else was, was fishing and, and I didn't have any confidence in. And what happened is I floundered. Yep. Right. So I think the big thing is you, everyone that, that is fishing has at least one lure in their box that they have confidence in. Use that as a tool, but go find your own fish. Go find, I mean, that, for me, that was a big thing. When I jumped back into that chasing a report, I, I floundered, right? Yeah. And and you, you find your own niche, you find your own groove, you know, on your you own. You know, road. people that call other people in, the percentage it doesn't work real good. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it it just doesn't. Well, if you think about it, if you look at this thing right here, you say this is one of your biggest confidence bases. Yep. That thing right there. Why do you think you catch fish on that? Not only because it's your confidence bait, but why do you think? And this is my theory. You look at that color. You know the type, the type of water that you've caught fish with that thing before. So yeah. instinctively, you're looking for those water conditions that you know you've seen in the past with that lure. And that's yeah. probably why it catches fish for your boat, yeah. but maybe not mine because I'm looking at different things. Different yeah. things that I know my lures are going to catch fish in. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys or not, but that's one thing no, that you, people don't consider. you got to build your own program. Yeah. you got to. I mean, it, as much as you, like over the winter, you listen to uh, – podcasts like this and you listen to different people talking and and i think the biggest thing is is take some things from that but keep your own program and just build on that yeah, right right yeah. just go do it just mm -hmm. go out there and just go yeah for be it. your own man yeah. be, don't don't follow somebody be a leader be your own leader just no, go you out have there to be a leader. just do well, it i don't mean be a leader I but i do you know i mean but, it's it's the water and you it's you versus the water for the weekend or, yep you know, look at the blue water and and, uh, and just 
take it in, take what God's given you. Yeah, like, if, if you're judging yourself against other people because you caught a bigger fish than them or they caught a bigger fish than you, you're looking at things completely wrong in my opinion. Oh, yeah. That is not the way to go through life, is worrying more about what other people have than what is laid out in front of you. Yeah. If that also makes sense to you guys, that's a... But mm -hmm. I'm really excited for you, Dave, and, and to see this thing roll out. He's going to need a hand from each and every one of us. But down the road, it's I can see it being really big. And I just I just uh, want you to all out there kind of help him out any way that you can. And because uh, he's sticking his neck out there and his wife, we don't want her to run away from him. I mean, <laughs> she's, he's, you got good duct tape at him. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I just I appreciate I that. And Thank you know you. what? People are going to go to the bait stores and they're going to look in their board like we do at, at for the big fish around here, you know, yeah. and it, it'll just be, mm -hmm. you know, and then if you got one that's hanging in there and you got to wait the whole time till it, you know, till that week's done or whatever, it, that's, that's pretty yeah. exciting. So that's one thing that I wanted to bring up, actually, Mark, is what you were just talking about there is when you go and look at those derby boards, when you go and look at uh, the leaderboards down at Captain Chuck's or here at Tangle Tank or wherever you might be, how often do you see... A charter boat at the top of the list. You see, you, there is. If I was to say something, if there's, if, it, if it's an open program to everybody, is it always a charter boat? No, no, absolutely heck, no, not. Heck, that, no. That's the point I'm trying no. to make. Uh -uh. More often than not, on these boards that we see here in Manistee, I'm seeing amateur boats up there. I'm seeing uh, there's charter boats up there also normally. I'm telling you, a lot of the tournaments, guys that that don't fish much win the big fish, yeah. and that's that's a fact. And if you, you don't believe that you can look at all the data that's out there and uh and uh yeah well i gave two rattlers away to these guys they only caught two fish remember that at the who was that at the uh at the last uh when we won the cup at the end the founders oh, cup yeah. yeah yeah yep so that one i gave them they, they only caught two fish in the week on the whole weekend and they caught the biggest one that was dave baker wasn't it no 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 that was at in frankfurt oh that's Th right. this sorry. was this was in in manistee gotcha yeah they, they caught the biggest fish so well, it must be your rod holders then. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it what it is is program, right? Making sure that you're paying attention to detail, right? Which the rod holders are part of that detail it's, and I can't flexibility. It's going to take people a long time before they catch on, but whatever. It doesn't. All I'm saying is your details. You need to build on your own details. Don't chase, you know, and, and don't chase someone else's details, but Become methodical, right? Become, understand what works for you and what, so, you know. So here's a podcast saying, here's how to catch big fish, but don't follow these details. No, I'm, I know, I know. Exactly. Yeah. Build your own program. Build your saying. own program. Don't. Here's some stuff you can start with. And I'm sure, Absolutely. At, like I said, anybody that's watching this isn't a first time fisherman. Uh, so yeah. they oh, got yeah. stuff that works and they got stuff that works really good. And, yeah. and just, you know, the biggest thing is get away from the boats. Yeah. The podcasts are great to get you started down that road. Yeah. You know, this channel, other channels out there. You know, Adam Knudsen's down uh, down at Lennington. He does a great job also. But these channels are out there to get you guys started. And then just go. Go do it. Just jump in the boat and just go do it. You're going to break stuff. You're going to lose stuff. You're going to spend money. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to wonder if you could ever do it. And all of a sudden, one day, it starts clicking. Because you're out there just doing it over I'm and smiling over. right now because I'm hard-headed, man. That's probably the only reason I'm still in the game. Yeah. I'm like... I ain't giving up, you know. Yep, I ain't absolutely. giving up. You never give up. Yeah, we'd be in a tournament. It's twelve o'clock. We got one more hour. We need two fish. Never give up. Never Keep give going. Up. Go, go. Yep, you know. Yep, absolutely. And you don't. You don't the, stop. There's a lot of tournaments that are one of them at uh, at twelve o'clock. Here's tournament. a good one. Okay, so you need a ten fish. So you, I needed uh, two more fish, and we come in, and they're dredging the harbor, and Kevin uses out right out in front of me, and he's by the buoys, and so I said, okay, you guys, we got a few minutes. So we held the rods in our hand, and I got pinched in, and I had to cut inside, and I was going to bottom out, and all of a sudden, psh, get a steel it on. It's jumping out of the water, right? So I hurry up and put it in neutral, put it in, drill that thing all the way, and we get it in. Now we got nine fish. So I get it right back out there. Same rod goes again, mm -hmm. right? This is this is like in eight minutes. Mm -hmm. We got it in, went in the heart, and we won it. Yeah, you want it. So <laughs> hey, here's a question for you, Mark, as long as I got you, because you do something differently than I do. I know this because I've seen you on videos. I've never fished with you, but I've seen you do this. Got a big fish at the back of the boat or just anything. You're going into neutral. Why are you doing that? Because the, the more, okay, the more pressure, this fish is going nuts, right? Mm -hmm. 
you got your weight, your pressure from your boat, from your props pushing backwards, mm -hmm. and it's it, there's a lot of disturbance in the water. Yeah. If you shut it down, it they, it's easier to bring them without, the fish down without also, ripping these small hooks. I mean, you have more pressure on them. Right. You know, this is easier than you know. You oh, know, absolutely. I I pop in a neutral when it's a big fish, and especially if he's way out there, we'll corner. We'll corner the boat to that fish mm -hmm. where it's you're not pulling straight on them, right? I'll I'll make little turns. To, yeah, and that's one thing with my holders. You can be quite official like this. Hang on to this. Take this holder. Move it over here. Yeah. I clear one whole side so you can turn sideways and get them on the side of the boat. You watch some of the videos from the the, the shows that we did this summer. Uh, you'll see that we netted quite a few fish on the side of the boat. Yeah, because one them big kings have a mind of their own and they're going to go where they want to go and. You know, by when you pop it in neutral forward, neutral forward, you you can. Uh, they're easier to net. I agree with you. you, you it's not something that I do, but I completely see the logic in it. I assume that's what you're going to tell me. It's just not something that I've done. One thing I, I've done, and this is just another. You know, we're kind of taking left turns here right now. But uh, one thing I've done for customers over the years, and for a lot of people, is getting them the right angle on the rod when they're fighting that fish. It's okay if you still got 200 feet of line out there if your rod's straight up in the air to fight that fish. But the closer that fish gets to the boat. I have people lay that rod down almost horizontal to the water. Is that something you guys do also? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I put the tip in the water. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Yep. And the yeah. reason is because, again, the fish can only swim up so far. And then you're, you're dragging them, them out way. of the water. Yep, you want gonna... them to lay on the top of the exactly. water. You don't want to, you know. Yep. You can't pull them out of the water. Yeah. Lay that rod Especially over. Especially when they're 30 pounds. And then you lose them. And then you lost a boat. <laughs> <laughs> you lost a 20 Yeah. 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 All right, hey, let's uh, open it up for questions out there to everybody. You guys, that's a lot of great information. I know we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants here. I don't. This is not an easy topic to answer. No, I mean a big fish is. There's a lot of luck involved, but there is. There's a lot of skill to get you where the lucky water is. That's a good point, Mark. Yeah. That's absolutely a good I, point. I, and for me, I think it's about becoming a better fisherman mm -hmm. as opposed to. That's where people should put their head at is is becoming a better fisherman. Figure out your program. And that's that will get you big. That'll be the biggest thing that gets you big fish. It doesn't matter what you know, this versus this will not get you a big fish, right? It's it's about getting in the right water. Getting where the right fish are. That, that was exactly my point earlier. So I'm just going to go out. I'm going to run my normal program where I, I feel there's going to be active fish, and if I get a couple big ones, hey, I'm happy that the lake gave me a couple special ones for that day. Yeah, yeah. But let's open it up for questions here on the chat. If you would please throw out anything that you like. These guys are here for you. Oops, I just uh, clicked the wrong thing there. Well, hold on. Getting back to that. We're still live. They can still see us. All right. <laughs> oh, one thing before we jump in. I have to say hi to my buddy Chris Curry over in Canada. He uh, he's he's like my 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 brother that I never had over there in Canada. So say hi. Yeah, absolutely. Say hello. I, I told him last time I'd say hi. I failed. You know, <laughs> failure to to pay attention to detail. But all right, hi Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> hi Lenny. I'll say hi to my wife and, uh, and my kids. My wife won't be watching, but Lenny's watching. Hi, Lenny. Good to Lenny, see you, man. Get that diver. I think it tripped. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's uh, run through some of the comments here and see if we missed anything. A couple guys saying, like Ryan Purchase, Huey Merrill, saying that they go with their gut feeling on these things. Uh, your gut feeling is uh, an informed feeling. When you talk about your gut instincts, it's because your brain has picked up something that you're seeing, and it's telling your gut instincts that might be a good idea or a bad idea. So you said Huey Merrill, huh? Yeah, Huey Merrill. You know Huey? Huey? He used to cut our grass at the resort. Huey! Yeah, yeah I yeah. know Huey. Yeah. Good guy. Uh, let's see here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, recommending people to hit the like button. That's wonderful. Uh, Ryan Purchase saying, Captain Mark, glad to see you're feeling well. You look great, he says. You do look pretty good. I'm going perch fishing tomorrow. Are you really? Big ones. Hopefully. Nice. Hopefully I get the big ones, but yeah, I'm going to go. Patrick Johan saying hello to you, Gabe. How's it going, Patrick? All right. Let's let's uh, let's circle back to the poll, see what the uh, everybody's saying about this. 
Your biggest salmon of all time was caught on a spoon, a flash apply meat rig, or a plug, 52% way out in front spoon. Now, that's not surprising to me. No. Spoons take a lot of good fish. Uh, flash or fly, meat rig, and plug, they're all hovering right in that mid teen range. So spoons is dominating that. That does not surprise me. We're going to end that poll right now. Bill Gerlach's on here. Good to see you. Scott Garb's asking, does leader line weight matter? 20 pound versus 30 versus 50. I, I guess he's going to, I guess when I think about that, when I think about leader lines, am I thinking down regular leader? Am I thinking my long line leaders? Am I thinking my dipsy leaders? What do you guys think? <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. What? I knew okay. you were going to do that. I like using a little bit lighter mm -hmm. because I get more action off of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I go with that, and that helps when you slow the boat down. And Are you talking about with your flies? With everything. With everything. I'm a little okay. on the lighter side. I got you. Better drags, lighter line. Yeah, last year I went down to 35 pounds for my fly leaders off my uh, flasher flies, and I did see a nice nice increase in hookups. So yeah, that's something to be said. My my leader poundage on my long lines is 25. I don't know what you guys use. I run 20. 20? Yeah. You yeah. find it all yeah. over the board with yeah. whoever you talk to. We we baby our fish too. Yeah. I mean that's that's I mean, a we're talking the, the numbers that run that are running spoons. A lot of guys don't run, like running flashers. They yeah. just they refuse it. So yeah. if you're running spoons, you can go lighter around. Those are good hooks too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric Neary saying back when it was legal to snag, he caught one on a hook. It was the biggest salmon ever on his he ever caught in his life. That was a long time ago. Mark Pearson saying what we're talking about. He has confidence in, his, in the baits that he runs. He says he puts them out there and he just leaves them. Yeah, like I've said in the past on this channel, I have A league uh, A league lures and I have B league. My A league's not working. I go to the B league and the B league's not working. I probably go back to the A league. If you if you're gonna run the same stuff, but you know what, it doesn't hurt bringing it in and checking it out oh, all the time out. because you're yeah. gonna have different action as you're reeling. How many times have you reeled, started reeling something and then get a fish on it? Or move it or grab the rod. Quite a few you know. times. I was handlining in a 400 steel last year because of a, a tangle and a steel had smacked it. Yeah. And I just handed it to the customer and said, hang on. You hung on. And meat rigs, I mean, you got to you gotta check the meat. If oh, you're yeah. running meat, it's, I, I, it goes in my brain. Once it plucks in my brain that, hey, that meat might not, you know, there might be something if wrong get, with it. If I get that, I check it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you look at that and half of it's gone or half of it's chewed off. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, Dave Suzma asking a pretty good question, a little off topic. He mentioned that Ludington and Manistee are opening up. What program would you recommend right now if you're going out on the big lake? Well, I would find out where the where the water temperature changes. I, I don't know if it's in 39 out there. I don't, I'd have to go out there. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, what we always do is get a Along the shoreline, and the afternoon bites better because the sun warms the water. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I'd be running the shoreline right now, looking yeah. for some water changes, looking for that little bit of water. If you find that little pocket of warm water, that's normally where you're going to find some fish. I'd yeah. check out creeks or river yeah, outlets, right? You'll set. find just a couple degree yeah, temperature change or a little bit of color yep. in that sunlight. It'll heat up better. Right? Yep. Stick baits on flat lines, thin fins, you know, small spoons. That's the kind of things I'd be running. I don't know about you guys, but. That, that's what I'd be looking at. I think it has a lot to do with how serious the winter is. If it's a really, really, really rough, right. then you know you can see the nutrients in the water just by having your graph on. If your graph is completely blue, or you know the background, you have it's not really a good area to be in. You're uh, in the Dead good, Sea. Good question. Question from Jason Wilkerson: Is there a water temp that you target for big fish? What do you guys think? I, my number one go to has always been 49 yeah. and you know it when they start to come in in august or or you know the end of july you can start to throw that away a little bit and you can get it up into the to mid 50s mm -hmm. 54 55 yeah because they're programmed to do what they're doing i'll get fish all the way up to 60 degree water and then it's you know yeah that that are out there in the harbor you throw that away too yeah, for me, it's always been pretty close to you. It's 50 and below for me. I try to stay right in that zone somewhat, but you know, that's I try to take all the guesswork out of things or overthinking things. So if I think 50 and below, that works for me. you got to remember, water's most dense at 38, so these fish are in 38-degree water right now. Uh, you're absolutely so. right there. 
So me, good, good question, though. I mean, for me, it's probably got a lot to do with the season, right? More so, like I'll fish in the springtime, I'll fish 43 degree water, right? But you'll fish anything you can find warmer. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I'm probably a little bit colder than that, like somewhere in that 46 range. Mm -hmm. But I fish out of temp too, right? If, if the conditions are right, you know, it may be 55, 60 degree water and I've been if, known to have my first mates pushing ice out of the way so I can get out there in front of my boat pushing. <laughs> yeah. But if you if you go from one point to the other, that's a long distance. You're going to find pockets of warm water, whether it's from creeks or it's just gathered up from the wind prior to yep. days before. Right. And it, and you're going to see the water color is not going to be as blue. The bluer it is, the clearer it is. The graph has nothing on it. That's going to be a long day if you stay there. I completely agree with you. Completely. And later in the day like something we already talked about if you're gonna be out there late in the day more often than not my center down rigger is down in that deep cold water with a big flash around there like that that's why i often get the big fish here's just later later here, in the day like a good one i'll run you know i have a sheet of paper and i'll be in the 15s and i'll write the temperature then i'll be in the 14s i'll write the temperature then as i head south or north every mile i write the temperatures down then if you get to uh, and it to a good spot then you don't worry about that but if you can't find nothing then you come back to your warmest water yeah yeah that don't, tell nobody, don't tell nobody oh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> no don't worry about that, that uh, gonna get stepped on. scott garbs is asking lure hook single hook or treble i always go treble i don't know about you guys i know out in the pacific northwest it's all singles because that's what they uh, they're mandated to do but i've never done singles i played with the singles on plugs before uh, like the standard ace high size. I, I keep going back to the treble. And I'm, I'm hooked on and, trebles. And I'm a single treble guy as opposed to the double. I'm same way on my place. Same way. Uh, Ryan Hart asked for thoughts on meat quality, freshness, keep them in ice, storage. Uh, what do you guys think? I, I keep them frozen and then I open them in the morning and I use them and then they go right back in the freezer if yep. I have any left. Never in the refrigerator. Yep. You can brine them. Um, yeah. I've done that often. That Brian, right there by Potsky's is awful good. It's it's over to the right, and they have they have clear too. That is really really good. Yeah, it's good stuff there. I agree with you. Yeah, Potsky does make good stuff. I uh, when we were having trouble getting getting meat, I went to and Frenchy, this gentleman we know he might be even on here. This might be. Is. Yeah, Frenchy, are you on there? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he gave me a bunch of uh, herring, and uh, I cut it all up. And I soaked it in that brine, and I'm not kidding you. I had 12 pieces, and I caught 12 fish off each. You know. so. And then the last part of that question was, what do we think is the most hardy bait or meat manufacturer out there? Which which bait lasts longest from which manufacturer? Mm -hmm. Okay. But it doesn't Here, mean it's going to be a good best. One. Here's a good one. If you, if you get something that has a lot of formaldehyde in it, it'll last for a long time. It's like a piece of leather. But it's not good. The fish don't like it either. Yeah. So I'd rather have one that a fish can rip in half, and you get that's, the fish. That's so, what I'm saying. Also. So yeah. familiar bite is way up above all, all, all the rest. Fan bite's good. Yeah. Um, I run a lot of big one cut bait, and I've had good luck with that. But fan bite's been good. I've caught a lot of fish on Dreamweaver strips. Uh, yeah, those uh, the Lucky Sevens. I started that running that a few times. That's pretty good. I still got my own. Do you? Yeah. 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 And for me. If it lasts more than one fish, I think it's too tough. Yeah, yeah, they should be able I, to. Uh, yeah, I. That's just me. I, no, I, no, when no, when I've good. had strips, and and sometimes if they'll get hit and it gets a little frayed on the backside, I'll I'll pull that strip and I'll put a new one in there. Yeah, I feed it to the seagulls. Uh, Russ Black asking, fishing deeper, slow down or speed up when you're out in the deep water? Well, to to fish deep and to, to get down there and do it right. You you got to go slower. If you go faster, all your stuff just keeps lifting it up, and you can't get it, can't keep it down. There. Yep, yep. So completely agree with you. Yeah, I slow down when I'm out in that deep water, running, yeah. running everything. You know, a couple deep or deep 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 divers and uh, the center down. Six hundred and thirty seven foot down in the bottom, I was catching fish off of that. So, but you want to say it again? Six hundred and thirty seven feet down. Yep. All the way in the bottom. Would you put it on a? 40 pound cannonball 65 65 <laughs> oh my gosh 
I almost was going to put a hard hat on, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed it that day. Yeah, if you guys didn't see it, uh, you did a an ad in in Fisherman or uh, article in In Fisherman, right? About well, when fishing I w- deep, right? When I started going, you know, on the shoreline, fishing with all the other boats, and I headed west. I kept on making stuff to be able to fish deeper because mm-hmm. I, I was getting them at two fifty, and mm-hmm. you know. So, anyways, uh, I had In Fisherman come up, and we're out there, and there's nobody around me, and I'm getting them at six hundred and thirty-seven foot down. Wow, I've never come and, deep. Never he's, come anywhere near. He said, I can't. Nobody's going to believe this. And so he had some deal with the feds, and the feds put some, uh, they, 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 they did seven salmons that they tagged and put, uh, what do you call them, in their brains. And they watched the fish go up and down. Okay. And it, it proved that that was true. So wow. well, we were doing it, but, you know. I believe you, Mark. Yeah. I absolutely believe you. I've just never gotten anywhere near that. I think 250 might be the deepest I've ever run anything. And for me, that was freaking me it's out. It's very hard to do. I well, mean, it's doubt. not easy. You know, you're gonna, yeah, it's hard to do. Without but. a doubt, that's hard to do. So it takes a lot. Why did I do it? I don't know, but I did. Well, you did it. That's why you but did you it. But, you know, in the old day, we used to think that the fish across, the, you know, if we didn't have them on our side, they're in Wisconsin or they're down in Chicago before we had the Internet, you know. Right. And uh, so right as the winters go, these fish keep dropping deeper and deeper. And then, you know, they're, they're up, you can get, I can get them every day. I mean, it might be a big challenge, yeah. but you you know you can get to where they're at. Uh, another big thing with fishing deep is your boat's got to be square. You have to your lines can't be kitty cornered to one side of the boat or the other. As soon as you you drop way down there, you got to make sure you're running. You know you you know which way the current's going. You know I you mean hope you know you get, yeah yeah because yeah. if if you're you're you know sidewalking the boat. And and your lines are off to the side, way down there. Your 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 baits are piled up on top of each other, right? And you're bringing one big <laughs> off. The other thing I'll say is that coincides with all that is less is more, in my opinion, when you're running deep. Yeah, you don't try to put your normal yeah. spread out there, and, and that goes with the whole spread. Mm-hmm. You know, like when we fished six rods all summer, and mm-hmm. then, you know, we might have seven out, eight out. I don't think we ever had nine out, but. If you're if you have thirty rods out and you're not catching any fish, or you have one rod out and you're catching fish, what's better? You know, well, thirty so, rods. I because <laughs> it looks good. I for me it's, it's spooking. I I think I run three riggers at a time. I, it gets in my brain that I'm I'm I have too much down there. There's too much clutter. Yeah. So I like things spread out. I don't, and we, you know, we like to fish less rods too. I, that's probably a big factor. for Less rods, we run, you know, I try and spread things out. Back, back in the 80s, we'd run five riggers and stack them with dodger flies for cohos. So we'd have we'd have 10 of them. They could look, had to look like a carnival act going through. <laughs> we catch them, but I mean. All right, let's start oh, wrapping this up here because all the batteries are starting to run down. But uh, Shannon Garchow has got a pretty good, pretty good question. When running double divers, should my high diver be deeper than my inside board? I would say it doesn't have to be. Should your high diver be deeper than your inside board? So say you're running a 300 copper on your inside. Should his high diver's outside diver be deeper than that 300 copper? What I used to do before tournaments, and I'll just say this really quick. I'd put a piece of paper down, and I'd put all the rats that I'm going to run out, and I would actually run the lengths of the line. If this diver's going to be out 200, you can put a 300 out here. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to put 200, 200 and have them tangle. So... You have to know the lengths where you're going to be and the depths that they're going to be. And you can either have that diver way underneath your high line here, but you don't want to get it relatively close, so right. you're going to bring in a big mess because yep. you get a lot of and that. Just remember, the, the farther you let that, that high diver out, the longer you got to scoot those boards out. Because like Cap Mark's saying, if that high diver goes off, you got a 450 feet out there, it's going to come right up into all your stuff, and you're going to have a huge headache. Huge headache. Ryan Purchase, thank you. Appreciate that uh, compliment there. Very nice of you. Everybody, we're going to wrap it up right now. Um, if everybody could take a second and say thanks to Captain Mark and Gabe Salson here. If you want to check out the Ultimate Salmon Derby, the website is linked in the description. Captain Mark, what is your website? At 360 Marine. 360 Marine. INC. INC.com. Guys, check it out. He really does have the premier rod holders on the Great Lakes. I've got to play with them. They are something to behold. They are really that good. Uh, so, yeah, excellent product, Mark. 
and thank you so much for being on. Gabe, thanks for being on. Thank you. Thanks everybody out there for being on here and paying. Uh, thank paying, uh, thank Gabe's to wife guys. too for having that. You yeah, guys she's drive home. Yeah. <laughs> right. she's, she's back there keeping the cat at bay, running a block around that. So I appreciate that. A lot of people saying thanks. So thanks to everybody there. We'll I just I just hope that one of you that's watching tonight wins one of the boats this year. So. I know. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that somebody yeah. that's on this channel tonight is going to win one of those boats. Yeah. I think it. My prediction. So as it stands right now, I think someone under the age of 13 years old is going to win a boat. That's I think. I think we, we're going to be surprised. Everyone thinks that you know they're they got the best skills and they're but. Women and children have patience a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. right? As yeah. far as reeling big fish in and so on, that's for sure. So, yep. I agree with one you. more thing the area that Go we have, it. the area that we have here, mm -hmm. very special. Yeah, it attracts big fish. So, if you go to history and find out where some of the big fish were caught. So that would that would tell you where to go. That's I mean, you know, if you come look back at, to the scene of the crime, if right? you look at Frankfurt down to Ludington, you know, you look over the years, you're absolutely right. Yeah, a lot of big fish caught in these waters. That's over probably the years. best advice I gave anybody tonight. I, I won't forget it. All right, yeah. wrapping it up. Thanks to everybody so much. Thanks again. Uh, check out these guys' website. Like I said, his is linked down below. Captain's Marks three sixty Marine Inc dot com. Check out his rod holders if you want to give great rod holders. He's got them. Anything else you guys want to say? Nope. See you on the water. See you on the water. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody.